that in general? And what do we do about them? Do we feel there are outlets that we have available to us to voice being mad or being upset or, or wanting to see justice? And, um, and so I thought this would be a great time to just talk about that, to talk about when we do see something that we feel is not right or we see an injustice, um, do we feel that we have a voice and what, what can we do with our voice to evoke the needed changes? Um, and so I'll give my story briefly, which is that I'm a writer and a filmmaker and I was working on I was, I was, you know, I was dealing with some personal issues with my father passing away and just being a new mom and not really knowing what I was going to do with my art at that point in my life. And I heard a story um, from a friend of mine who told me um, about a tower climber, which are the men and women who climb cell towers so that we can have cell service. And a friend of mine called me one day after work to tell me of a 28 year old tower climber who was working on a tower and it was beautiful. It was July. It was warm. He had posted pictures on Facebook of how beautiful his view was. And a few hours later, they were lifting a heavy piece of equipment and a cable snapped and it decapitated him and cut off his arm. And I remember when my friend told me the story, I couldn't believe that this happened here in the United States. Um, I couldn't believe that someone just doing their job lost their life in such a tragic way. And I couldn't believe that no one was talking about it. Like I searched online and I couldn't find articles about this terrible accident. And so I started digging around to find anything I could about tower climbers, whether it was news articles about them, how many tower climbers there are, you know, in the United States, anything I could find. And there was just really little information um, and even less information on the safety regulations that are in place for them or um, what organizations are doing to keep them safe. And so I thought that it was in some weird way, it was my duty to shed light on this and to give a voice to a group of people who didn't have a voice. Um, and so what I did was I decided that I wanted to write a film and I titled it Hi. And I wrote the script and that was like, it took a couple of years, like to write this script. You know, I had spent a lot of time at this point with tower climbers. I, you know, I became friends with many of them. And um, so I wrote this script, but I realized that it wasn't just writing a script and making a movie that was important. If I wanted to see real change and I wanted there to be justice for these men and women who do so much for all of us, I needed to think a little outside of the box on how I could spread the word and bring awareness and talk about them. And so I did that by creating, as Caitlin said in the last segment, you know, small segments, small episodes that deal with real issues that tower climbers face. Um, and I felt that that was a really good way to get people's attention. And let me see if I, I could share one. I could share one of them with you and- Please. Yeah. Um, it, 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 to me, it feels like, you know, people are so busy nowadays and there's not a lot of time to get people's attention. So how could I, me, one person in this huge industry of, you know, telecommunication, how could I um, shed light on this and, bring awareness. And so this is an example of how I thought I would do that. This is episode one. Let's see. One second. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And thank you so much for the work that you do. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. my question to you is what, what is the, the, the inner line for you I guess the motivational factor that pushes you to try to create social justice and change in social justice. Because one thing, and Michaela, um, back me up on this, if, if, if I'm right, or correct me if I'm wrong, I know just from listening to Michaela, she has a lot of like um, high values. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, her values are really high and things that are not socially um, 
you know, conscious or applicable, she's, she's not with it, you know? So, so she's on the same page as you. What are some of the things that you do that, you know, you had that feeling, but makes you want to get your message out there? I think that, I think for me, I, it, it's sort of like, you see something wrong and you don't want to walk away from it or you can't walk away from it. You know, it's like we can all like see bad things happening in our world and we can turn a blind eye and then we'll just continue to see those bad things happening. Or we can say, you know, we look at in the past that, you know, Dr. King, you know, look at, you know, look at people in history who have made change. It wasn't easy, but they stood up against what wasn't right. You know, they, they, they weren't willing to just, sit back and watch an injustice take place or watch something that they weren't happy with continue to unfold. They, they were willing to stand up and say enough is enough, like where this isn't right or how can I be just part of the needed change? And I think for me, you know, I had a little, when, when I heard the story, my daughter was 10 months old and I thought, you know, maybe this change won't happen in my lifetime, but I want my daughter to live in a just world and I want her to I want her to stand up for what's right and for her to, to see her mother doing something, having a voice and using it. I think it's important for girls particularly to know we have a voice and we can make a change. And so I think that really having a child really sort of pushed me even more to say, I'm going to do something. I see this, this isn't right. And I'm going to do my part, hopefully to make a change. Um, so let's see if I can if I can share my screen with you guys. Um, it's yeah, it's not. I don't see. And oh, oh, if you can't share it, can you put it in the chat? I can share mine. Yeah, screen. yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that's great. That's a good idea. I can share mine. That's a, perfect because it's Michaela, not letting me share my screen. Do you have a question, Michaela? How many times have you used your? <laughs> You can come up with one. Um, I know, like, I think even for like when you're young, I feel like that's that's really when, at least for myself, I felt I felt like, you know, what really can I do to make a change? But there's so many, there's so many avenues available today um, that we can all, like for all of us, um, that are, you know, social media being one. I mean, everyone uses our cell phone, everyone's on social media. Like, I feel like there's so many, there's so many things that we can do to, to, um, to spread good and to talk about good, to talk about things that are not just, to, to, to make the changes in this world that we want to see. And I think, especially in high school, it's, you're such a great age, you're such a great place to start figuring out what it is that you want in your life and what it is that you want to see changed. Like, what, what do you, you know, what do you currently see that's in the world that you're unhappy with? I feel like- Aerial man is killed early this morning oh, in a crash. This is, um, I feel like now is the time at your age is where you're thinking about that and you're, you're able to start planning how, what changes you wanna see in your life personally, but then also in this world that you live in. And so, um, I don't know, I, I hope that, I, I hope for all of the students that I, that I was able to see today on, that I, I feel extremely inspired by the work that you guys are doing and, and by the students. Like, I, I wish I were that age again and that I was able to, I was able then to know what I know now. And, and you know. I, I, and, and it's like, I feel like for me, it's like, that's like the, 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 the sucky part of growing up is like you get <laughs> yeah. all this knowledge and information that you're it's like, true. I wish I would have been able to process this Me when I was too. like Michaela's age and yeah. been able to process that and then, but being aware and like, oh man, these are like great opportunities. Let me jump on this because if I do all this stuff now, maybe later on down the line, it'll get a little bit easier. Exactly, exactly. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. Okay. Ooh. um for yeah for both of you yeah i um yeah I, I lost you guys for a moment like i couldn't i couldn't it wouldn't let me i'm having technical difficulties so let's see yeah come on. did you put it in the chat yeah i'm i did but it's not it it's i don't know what's happening but here i'm putting it in right now okay 
six two two nine zero zero five. Got it. Yeah, hopefully that will open and then it'll let you share it. All right, cool. All right, I'm gonna share this. Okay. Michaela, can, Michaela, please let me know if you can see my screen, okay? Share screen. All right, share right here. Yep. Michaela, can you see it? Yep, she's there. All right. How many times have you used your cell phone today? It is projected that by 2020, there will be well over 5.7 billion cell phone users. The average number of times a cell phone user touches their device in a given day is 2,617 times. In 2016, according to vertical consultants, there were 964,444 cell sites in the U.S., which includes towers, rooftops, billboards, flagpoles, traffic lights, and water tanks. And that number just keeps growing and growing. Yet, despite all the technological growth, there are only approximately 17,000 tower climbers in the U.S. But it's hard to get true totals because some tower companies don't report the numbers correctly to keep their insurance costs low. In order to keep up with this tremendous growth, climbers sacrifice their family lives, spend days, weeks, and months on the road, working long hours in isolation so that you can watch this video. But there is a cost. Can you see them now? Good. So like, you know, that was, you know, 60 seconds. Um, yeah, within that 60 seconds, we learned that there's, you know, a tremendous amount of cell towers, in the, you know, here in the United States, there's a really small number of tower climbers to service all of these cell phone towers. And as humans, we touch our cell phones a tremendous amount of times per day. Um, so you would think that this would be something that more people would care about, or that there would be, you know, the companies like the big carriers would care more about these men and women, but they don't. And so how can we, how can we change that? you know, how can we start the conversation? But for like Michaela, like how, you know, when she sees things, when you see things that you feel unhappy about, what can you do um, to change them? And, and me making this video was, you know, it was a very small thing. It didn't take a lot of effort. It didn't take a lot of money to put that together to, I think it has like over 4,000 views now, which for me is great. Um, but that's, you know, that was a really small investment that hopefully will help to 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 produce a bigger gain. You know, I, I invested something small for you know hopefully a bigger payback, which is that hopefully these small little videos will help toward the greater good, and that these men and women will be, you know, will be safe. And so, I think you know the if there's anything that I can say, it is that we do all have a voice and we should all not feel afraid to use it. And we should all feel valued and confident and using that voice for whatever good we want mm. to add to this world. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. Um, can we talk a little bit about your screenwriting and just yeah. as being a writer, um, you got a chance to spend some time as a Sundance um, Night Fellow, also a Stories Lab, Stowe Stories Lab alumni. Um, so these are really prestigious, like writing institutions when it comes to storytelling and writing. Um, what is your process like as a writer? Um, and just, I guess, a storyteller, do you, can you just take us through your workflow of just the process from your idea until actually getting that script out into the world? So for me, I really, I, I, I like to do my research first. So I, I, I spent like on the front end, a lot of time researching this world that I wanted to create. Number one, I wanted to know the ins and outs of the world. I wanted to know how I was going to create these characters um, because I'm not a tower climber. I have no experience as a tower climber. Um, so how I was going to make an authentic story about something that I myself have never experienced. Um, so research was definitely at the forefront was really important to me. Um, and then I just started to write. 
I, I, I really, I started to write the story um, without limits. Like I know a lot of people like to like outline first or they like to create all these story arcs or these story backgrounds or, or these backstories. Um, and that's great. And, and ultimately, like, I think I do it backwards because a lot of people do that on the front end and then they have that to work throughout their writing. I like to write first. I like to just get it on paper and, and get it all down. And then once I have it, I see the holes or what's not working. And then I go back and I create my character backstories and I go back and I create my timeline and I write and I write and I write and I write. I mean, it's been six years and um, I'm still writing. I'm still editing. I'm still, you know, I just recently, um, signed a development deal for the film and yet I'm still editing you know like that one of the two you know two of the requirements was two edits two drafts of the script um so it's like wow like I'm I'm already six years in and now I'm still editing and editing um I think it's like they say you know you're editing still like when you're on set you're still revising things yeah. um but I I find that just writing I think if you think of well, I need to do this and that. It's all like procrastination and, and hinders you from actually getting the work done. I think if you just write, um, that's the best place to start is just to get it down on paper. I, I, I love what you say about just write. Like yeah. I, I tell my kids all the time, like 90% of the job is just showing up and just doing it. And then you'll be able to see like the adjustments that you need to make um, during that process. As a parent, how have you been able to navigate this pandemic um, mm -hmm. and just trying to make sure that your daughter is getting the most out of just education and and just, you know, just staying on top? Like, what are some of the things that you've been doing um, as a parent just kind of to keep the educational education going at home? I, I, it's it's a challenge. My daughter is nine. And so she's in third grade. And fortunately, in September, they went back to campus. So they are, she's physically in school. Um, but um, we have been doing a lot of reading. It's interesting, like over, like through the pandemic, we like went back to like classics. Like we were reading, we were reading like the Wizard of Oz and then watching the movie. I mean, she's nine, she'd never seen it before. So like, we were like going back and reading um, Winnie the Pooh and then watching Winnie the Pooh. Like it, it was a way of like keeping her engrossed in the payoff is gonna be, we're gonna watch this movie because she's definitely a film kid. Um, but we've been reading a lot. Um, She's also, she's nine and she, it's interesting that like in this day and age, um, like YouTube is like a source of uh, education. And so she has been, she asked for Christmas for a video camera and editing equipment, editing software. So she's been like, we've been giving her like ideas, like premises for films, like, um, the other day I said to her, Mia, you like, I want you to shoot a video of your guinea pigs and why you love them. Like what, like encompass why it is that you love them. Think about like what you would shoot, what we would see and make a script and then film it and edit it. And so we've been doing a lot of that too. Like we've been doing a lot of, she's been filming things and then we've been editing things. I've been showing her on final draft, how to um, write a script. We've been just sort of spending time creating in our house. Um, she loves to draw, um, but we've also been talking a lot about sort of like what's happening in the world. I mean, she knows a lot about tower climbers because of obviously my film, but we talk a lot about life. You know, we, we've talked about the coronavirus. We talked about the election. We talked about George Floyd. We we talk in this house about what's happening, and then we ask Mia her take on what's happening, because I want her to know like your take and your thoughts they, they matter today, and they're going to matter when you get older. And like if you don't like what you're seeing, let's talk about it. And 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 I want her to know that she has a voice, so that she grows up knowing like yeah, I have I have a say in this. In her school, they had an election, like they had. The day of the election, they had them all like cast their ballots and, you know, and they talked about that. And, and it was great, like for her to 
to know, like, you know, this is the president, this is the vice president, this is, you know, this is, this is what's happening in our country and, and how do I get involved even as a child? What, how does my voice count? And so um, we, we just try to really make her feel important as a human, not as a child, but a human, and to try to feed her with knowledge, just, you know, how I, 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 I I, I love everything that you that you do as far as you know just trying to consistently push your daughter to you know learn more just take on these challenges and just what you do um social justice is mm. obviously a really a, a really big thing um do you it, just tell us really what is some of the things that we need to be doing on the ground floor where we can get active and we can make an impact which is for Michaela and myself. Um, or you're talking about with tower climbers specifically, or you're talking in general? Just for our own, using our voice to fight social justice. I think it's, we all have an opinion. I think it's to speak it. I think if, if you use Instagram, if you use Facebook, if you have a podcast, if you are talking to a friend, I think it's important that we, feel comfortable voicing our opinions and voicing what we think needs to change. I think that we cannot be afraid to go against the grain and we cannot be afraid to have an unpopular message. You know, like I post every day about tower climbers. It's not a popular message. People are probably sick of hearing me post about it, but I'm going to continue to post because I believe that change needs to happen and change only happens when we keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And so I think the key is just not being afraid to like not be the popular person in the room and being willing to stand up and fearlessly say this is wrong and I want to see it changed. What motivates you to try to make the change? Like you're one person. Like what makes you think that you as one person can actually change the tower climbing industry? I think the community. I think that, I think that, you know, there's some days I'll get a text from someone or like a message on Facebook from someone in Africa or someone in Poland who says, when I wake up in the morning and I have to climb, and then I'm tired, I look forward to your messages. They keep me going. That, like I just had chills thinking about it. That's what matters to me is that the people who matter really are these climbers who have felt like unheard all this time, that they appreciate the message, that they appreciate the encouragement, that they appreciate that I'm fighting for them. That's what keeps me going. That's what makes me know that like I'm on the right track. You know, yeah, I don't have... 100,000 Instagram followers. Yeah, I don't have, um, you know, I'm not rolling in cash and like, you know, people in Hollywood are, are banging on my door. But the people who I'm fighting for know that I'm fighting for them and it matters to them. So I'm going to keep fighting. And I think that that's what matters to me. That, I mean, yeah, it, it, to have like uh, an ally like you on the front line being able to get that message out there when the tower climbers are the ones that are in the field um, sacrificing and risking their lives is, is, is pretty amazing. Michaela, um, do, you, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask? And, and I know you're gonna say no, but I want you to, I'm just gonna challenge you and just throw something out there and you can put it in the chat because we'll still have a minute after that time. I want you to just put it in the chat. Um, you know, this is just this is just part of the flow. Cause I, even if she doesn't, Michaela's gonna be on the same stage as you, Tisha. I, I already know Michaela when she when she gets older. I mean, she has such high values, high character that you know, if, if she doesn't, she's just soaking it in. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad that you're here, Michaela. Like, you don't have to say a word. I'm just glad that you're here. And you know, Mr. Taylor speaks so highly of you, and I know that you're gonna do great things. And and just really, just move through this world with purpose and you can do anything, you can change anything. And I'm, I'm here supporting you like from here, like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm supporting you. And I, and I hope to see you out here standing strong and fighting for what you believe in. 
So thank you. Thanks for joining. It was, it's good that you were here.